All right, so welcome back. So in the last video, we kind of talked about how the flow of the game works. We're not completely done with the flow of the game, but I thought we'd talk about how these cards work as well. So um, before we continue on, so now the purchasing happens. So if you watched the last video, we did the first part phase of the game where we are con where we are rolling dice, trying to get as much as we can with what we roll. And then, of course, we would move our uh, cube creatures on the race track after that. And then, if we have money, then we can start purchasing dice. And so, um, this is the cheapest one in the game, at least uh, for the if this is your first time playing, you're gonna play with all of these cards here if it's your first time playing. So here we have the rich dog. If you choose to buy this dog, it's going to have, out of the six sides, it's gonna have two sides that have something on it. One will have three money. So if you roll this one right here, you get three money every time you roll it. That's very useful since these light gray dice only have a one on it. And even the, even the dark gray ones or black ones here only have a one on it as well, but they also have a foot too, I suppose. Um, so that's useful. However, if you roll the dog, so rich dog, if you roll the dog, you will gain the three money, just like if you rolled the three, but you'll lose this dice and it's not optional. So you'll get the three money and then you'll lose it. So if you do that, you don't want to do that too often. Um, you're gonna, but unfortunately that's going to happen quite often. You're going to do that and then you're gonna lose it. So that means you're gonna to have to buy it back if you wanna keep using the rich dog ability. But still, if you luck out and you get the three, you continuously get to use this dice over and over until you roll the dog. So three money that you can use in your purchase. So that's one of the cards in this game. Now this one can be a little useful in the beginning of the game, but not so much towards the end. I found this very, very, um, very useless towards the end of the game especially when I had more dice to roll and better dice. So rock on for the cost of four money, this active ability, if you push, you may first move this dice to your roll zone before you roll. So if you roll a shield and you have a shield sitting in your active zone. So let's get the dice out. You saw the dog in the last videos, but we'll go ahead and get the shield out. So if you roll this, You'll put this into your active zone, okay, the shield. Now, um, okay, so let's do that. Now, let's say this, this, is a, this is why this could be useful. You have the shield in your active zone, okay? Let's say you also had two other dice um, also in your active zone. So now you have three dice. So that means if you are going to push it, push your luck and roll again, you, if you roll no, nothing at all, then you bust, which is bad, right? But if you have the rock on here ability, you can instead move the shield back into the roll zone and re-roll your dice with that shield. Now, you only have two dice here, so you won't go bust because now you have less than three. So that's how that will work. Of course, if you have more than more than three dice, still, even after you move the shield into the equation, if you go bust, yeah, that would still happen. So that it doesn't completely protect you from going bust, at least with this ability, it doesn't completely protect you unless, for instance, you rolled this earlier and you have three here and you move it into your roll zone and now you only have two. So that's the only way. So it might give you an additional roll for free without having to worry about going bust, maybe. So that's what Rock On will do. But it will allow you to re-roll that green dice, hopefully maybe getting the one with the foot on it, allowing you to move your cube creature further up the racetrack. So that is something, at least. Then we have Bob, this blue ability that works with the blue dice. So let me get one of those dice. So, Bob here, it does have a two money on it, on one of the sides, but it also has this symbol as well. If you roll this symbol, after you take your move step, gain one reward space that is one or two spaces away. This is extremely useful. A lot of the best reward spaces 
are going to make it so you have a longer journey to the finish line because they're further out. They're on the outside of the track, not on the inside. The majority of them are, are anyways. But if you want to move on the inside and you have Bob and you roll this dice, okay, and you get that symbol, you can use that ability to basically get a reward that's only one or two spaces away. So if I was here and I didn't want to go the long route and I was here, I could still get any of these because they're all within one or two spaces within from my cube creature. So this is extremely useful. And the cool thing about this ability, if you have multiple, if you have more than one of these sitting in your active zone, if you have more than one, you'll get more than one reward. And you can even get the same reward as well. But it's only after you take your move step and you can't use it to get any rewards that you were on when you moved. So if I was, let's say I was here, right here, and then I moved one, two, I couldn't go for this exact spot again. Okay, so that is not allowed. But for instance, if I was here, I could go for here with the Bob ability and get to activate this. This space right here is gain another dice. When you get that, it allows you to gain any dice you want. So using Bob towards the end of the race is very helpful if you don't want to go the long route, but you still want to get that extra free dice from that reward spot. So that's how Bob is going to work. I found Bob extremely helpful. Okay, then we have the Reckless Cheese for 10 money. It's got cheese on two of the dice sides. This is an active ability. Each time you push and do not bust, gain one foot and use it immediately. So this is before this. If you get to activate this ability, it'll be before you move. It'll be before abilities are used. It'll be before all that. You'll just get to do it immediately, which is awesome. I only got to do it once, but it was cool getting to do it once. Um, and then I did roll it a few times, but unfortunately, I never busted, or I never, or should I say, I never pushed my luck. So it's only if you push your luck when you have a chance of busting, and then you don't bust, and then you have to have this, obviously, in your active zone to gain that additional foot. That's the only time that will happen, so it's very hard to pull off. So I didn't find it extremely helpful, because I only got to do it once. Okay. Mr. Soldier is powerful, but it depends on a couple of things. So, if you roll a sword, so if you got one of these symbols here, um, whoever has the most swords at the end of the basically of the basically of the roll phase, after everyone has rolled and there's no more rolling going on, you count up all the swords each player has. Whoever has the most swords is going to get to do this ability that Mr. Soldier has. The players who don't, they don't get the abilities, but they also don't lose their dice either. So they don't have to worry about that if they lose basically the the fight. Now, if you are the if you want to break a tie, if there's a tie, whoever's closest to the player or whoever happens to have the basically the free dice, they will automatically win the tie. So that's one way to break ties if there is a tie for swords. But regardless, you're going to get three credits if you're the winner. So three credits, meaning these things. You're going to get these, three of them, and you're going to get to move twice. And you're going to do this ability before the move phase even begins. So you're going to gain two additional foots, two ad additional movement, basically. So that's really powerful. But then, because it's so powerful, you'll lose one red dice. So if you had multiple red dice in the roll, in the active zone, you only lose one. You don't lose them all, you just lose one. But in the beginning of the game, you might just have one. And so that you'll find yourself having to buy this one over and over again. So that's the soldier. Then we have the dugout. Now this one costs seven and it's got the animal face on two sides. When you roll the dugout, you'll you'll get to do this an, a, a, this ability immediately. So when you roll and put this particular dice in the active zone, um, you, you'll get to select three dice. This is after you're done rolling, basically. Um, whether you decide to go bust, uh, to push your luck or not, I mean. But 
if you go bust, then you won't get to do this ability. So you'll, that's something to note. Um, anyways, so you'll select three dice from your draw zone. So if you have dice sitting here in the draw zone that you weren't able to utilize, meaning you weren't able to roll them this round, you'll get to take three of them from the draw zone. You'll get to roll them, okay? And then any hits you get, so any, any stuff that you get, rewards you get for whatever, if it rolls on a side that's going to give you something, you'll get to move to the active zone. That's awesome. Everything else will stay in the roll zone if you didn't get to get anything, obviously. Um, and you don't, and you don't have to worry about going bust. So the dugout does not count towards the busting. So you don't have to worry about if you get nothing, are you going to go bust? That's not going to happen ever if you use the dugout ability. So that's pretty cool dugout. I found that extremely useful. Okay. Now we have Rollosaurus. This one costs 12 money. So it's a extremely expensive one. It only has its animal face on one side. So the chances of rolling it are hard, but if you have multiple of these, it's possible you could get at least one. I did at the end of the game, one of the players ended, ended up rolling two with this side. So that's awesome. So when you do happen to roll this side, you'll get to move four. So that's awesome. So during movement, if you have a, you'll basically will be a Rollosaurus because you'll get to move four. Awesome. Four, you get to add four to movement. So that's powerful. Okay, here's a, not, a nice one. This one's extremely useful. For five money, we have the smelly cat. Um, if it has two foots on two sides, so if you roll the foot, you'll get to move one space up the tract. And if you roll the cat, you get to move two, uh, basically two feet up the tract. So there's a chance you'll get to do two, and there's a chance you'll get to do one. So that's pretty useful. Smelly Cat is awesome. So that's how that's going to work. That's all of the cards. That's how all the cards are going to work. Now, of course, there's tons of cards in this game. And there's tons for each color. So there's lots of replayability. Some are more challenging than others, obviously. But this is like the starter. This is what you're going to play for your first game. These are the cards. Okay, so that's how the card thing will work. So, um, so anyways, so you'll purchase your cards... After you purchase your cards, so let's finish talking about how to play the rest of this game. After you're done purchasing, okay, um, you are going to get to put the dice that you purchased into the discard zone along with the dice that you used. Regardless of whether you used the dice or not, all dice sitting in active zone are going to be put into the discard pile. Then when everyone is done, so once everyone's everyone is done, then you'll move all of your dice that are sitting in the discard zone and you'll move them back into the draw zone, okay? And then, and then, and then when you're preparing for next turn, then you'll need to draw up to the number indicated on the roll. If you have extra hands, then you'll get to draw more, obviously. But the dice that are stay, that are sitting in your roll zone when you do this, stay here. So you'll be stuck with these. So then you'll do, you'll be like, okay, so I have to roll, I get to roll nine. So five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I won't be rolling these two, but I'll still get to roll all of these. So that's basically what you're going to do. And that's going to continue. Okay, that's going to continue. So you'll have credits. You'll be able to use credits whenever you please, when you get them, um, or you can save them for later for that Rollosaurus, which is very useful. Um, obviously, you're going to be rolling dice. You're going to be moving your cube creatures. You're going to be buying dice. And obviously, you're, you're going to be preparing for next round, and everyone's going to get a chance to roll with this over the course of the game several times. And of course, if you go bust you at least get to move up on the fan track of the board. So you at least get to do that, which is something that's quite nice. And I think I explained pretty much the the entirety of this game. Uh, I think I explained it all pretty well. I don't think there's anything else to talk about unless I decide to uh, talk, about, talk about the other cards in another video because there's so many card abilities in this game. But other than that, I think... That's all you need to know to really understand how to play this game. You know, you also have this, which is double-sided, that will tell you things. Draw dice, then roll the dice, 
then move your hits to the active zone. We explained all of that. Um, use abilities if you have them. Resolve the sword if that's a thing. Determine how much you're going to move and how much money you've got. Then move your character, your cube creature. And then um, gain your rewards from the spaces that you land on, etc., etc. And then um, you buy cards. So you use your money to buy the cards. If you don't use all your money, you will lose it. So the only thing you don't lose are these credits, but you'll lose all the money that are sitting on the dice itself. Then you'll move all your dice from the active zone into the discard zone as well and start all over again. Now, I will say there is one other thing you can do. If you don't want to buy a dice, okay, but you don't want to waste all of your money, if you have four money, okay, you can use your four money to move your cube creature up one on the race track. So that is an option. So if you don't feel like buying a dice, but you have four money lying around and you're going to lose it anyways, you can at least do that. But basically, that's everything you need to know in order to play Cubidos. So um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like for this video or the last video for that matter if you guys liked this explanation of how to play Cubidos. And I'll see you guys again next time.